The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. Happy uh, New Year's Eve weekend, last day of 2023. You got to do any tax selling out there? My dad was getting some great questions on his program last night. He was talking about it. Uh, tax is a very important part of what you take home at the end of the day. Today's the last day, man. We come back. It's 2024. It's been quite a year for equities, quite a, week, a year that we've had a resurgence in notes and bonds, as in higher price, lower yield. We're going to talk about some of the action as we wrap it up. We'll talk about some of the themes that we've had for 2023 as we lap, wrap up the last trading day. Uh, this weekend, we're closed on Monday for New Year's, of course, folks. Be safe out there, all right? Everybody likes to party. We all like to have a little fun, hopefully. Be safe out there. No drunk driving. Nothing wrong with a few cocktails, especially on New Year's Eve. But make sure you get home safe. And remember, folks, it's not always about you. It's not always about getting home, not getting a ticket. It's making sure that, you know, you can hurt somebody else. You can hurt yourself, the people in your car. Life is too beautiful. Get home safe, man. We'll see you back here on Tuesday. But we got one more trading day. We got 23 minutes until the opening bell. And let's kick it off. S&Ps, we got slightly red territory across the board right now. All things considered, 48.29. Quite a price tag in the S&Ps as we finish the year basically at record territory. S&Ps off by two this morning at 48.29. NASDAQ 100, we're off by two points as well. 17,089. How about the Dow? 38,000 is where we end. Uh, well, we'll see. 38,019. We're negative by 10 points right now. We'll see if we hang on to that in the futures. And the Russell, negative by three. Bitcoin, quite a year for Bitcoin as well. Bitcoin right now up $320 at $43,430. You jump over to crude, one of the big stories this year. $71.99, quite a price tag for the price of crude as we wrap up 2023. Gold, another story. It's like no matter where you look, man, remarkable action. And it's because what? We're in an interesting cycle right now. We haven't been in one of these cycles, right, where we are coming off higher interest rates for an extended period of time that's been tightening the economy. So what does that do? What does a Fed hiking policy agenda do to the markets? Well, it impacts everything, man. You're talking about interest rates drive currencies, which drive commodities, interest rates drive the cost of capital, which impacts, obviously, the price of equities and the future value of those cash flows etc so with that and the movement we've had in yields which has had an impact of course on the dollar index which has impacted something like gold tremendously and you know what happens if we get a pullback even below where we're at in the dollar index right where does gold go to check out that gold report if you haven't folks great time to sign up for the gold report my dad's outstanding newsletter 101.36 the dollar up by 14 pennies right now you jump to notes and bonds, could say the story of the year. A little bit of a reprieve. We're negative by eight ticks right now in the tenure at 112.20. You jump over to the daily, quite a quite an acceleration. One of the more remarkable things is we're finishing the year basically where we kicked it off, right? Look at this. So wait, what week opens it? So technically, is this a daily I'm looking at? This is a daily. Let's zoom in. What's the first day? The first day was January 3rd. We opened at 112.18. Look at that. The 10-year opened at 112.18. January 3rd, 2023. We're trading at 112.20. Two ticks. Two ticks. If you were somehow able to sell volatility 12 months out last year and you withstood the volatility that you had throughout the year, you ended up right where you kick things off as we are sitting at a price point within a couple ticks. Absolutely remarkable when you look at the move that we've had to be within a couple ticks of where you kicked off the year. Now, that is correlating to a yield of about 3.89%. I think we were at almost 3.82 yesterday. So a little bit of an uptick, well off of the 5% handle we had on the 10-year when you were trading at 105.10. We're sitting right at about the 618 retracement of the entire pullback from May. 
And yeah, we'll see where we go as the market pricing in potentially a cut. March 20th, put it on your calendar, folks. It's my 44th birthday. And that's when the Fed may be cutting, March 20th. Can't forget that one. All right, what else we got? Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we kick off the last trading year. Boy, you know, you put these things on a, on a year going back 365 days. You didn't have many pullbacks this year. Amazon almost doubles from 80 to 153. Okay, this is just going back this year, right? Google goes from a similar 85 to 140. Apple actually slightly underperforms versus some of the other big tech companies. You're trading at 124 to 193 percentage-wise, not in line with some of the likes that we just talked about. Google shares, 85 to 140. No, that one we covered. Microsoft shares from 220 to 375. They're pushing all-time highs. NVIDIA, quite a story for them this year. Trading at 495, make it 497 in the pre-market. NVIDIA's only got to go $8 to close at an all-time high. And that would be uh, for the year they've had. Why not, right? Meta, another bang-out year, man. From 115 to 358, Zuckerberg, uh, he wipes out everything in terms of those losses when they thought he was just going to lose all their money. Advertising was going to dry up because of the Apple policies for privacy. They were sinking money into virtual reality Meta, um, and AI and just the metaverse in general, which is why they are now meta. But don't sell the Zuckster, man. He got it done. He reverted, and uh, advertising has held up pretty well for that company. And we were within $30 of all-time highs from meta shares. As they are one of the most, uh, one of the best-performing stocks of the year. You know what else was one of the best-performing stocks of the year? Not that one. ANF, Abercrombie & Fitch, man, Okay. I mean, if you picked out NVIDIA because you saw the craze, kudos to you, okay? If you picked out Abercrombie & Fitch surging from 22 to 90, well, geez, man, I don't know how you did it, but um, extra kudos for you in a resurgence for that equity from 14 to 90, right? Absolutely remarkable. I was reading about this one on Bloomberg this morning. Let's pull that article over. We kick it off with an Abercrombie and Fitch story. How about that, man? Abercrombie, 300% surge in 2023. Yeah, even beat sizzling hot NVIDIA. Top performing stock in the S&P 1500 index. How about that, man? The top performing stock among the S&P 1500. They beat out NVIDIA. Um, yeah, the S&P retail select industry index only up about 21% this year. But, boy, they really turned it, to, turned it around. They cleared their extra inventory. That was a big problem. Focused on its target audience, young millennial and Gen Z shoppers heading back to work, school, and social lives. And they capitalized, man. Yeah, some investors taking profits. I would say so. Um yeah, you got analysts boosting fourth quarter adjusted earnings per share expectations by more than 30%. Momentum can continue is one of the quotes. Though, yeah, going to be tougher to deliver upside against already high expectations. Remember this quote, folks, with everything going on on some of those high flyers. It's going to be tougher to deliver upside against already high expectations. There are high expectations almost everywhere in this market right now. Uh, where we're going with yields, high expectations, Right. Where are equities like NVIDIA are priced? High expectations in terms of their earnings, their revenue, their future growth, etc. Um, yeah, keep that one in mind as we go forward. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about some of those equities in terms of the year we've had. 15 minutes till the opening bell. Last trading day of 2023, folks. Oh, oh wait, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps off by two, NASDAQ 100 off by two points as well. Dow and the Russell barely in the red. We were just talking about high expectations, right? Some of the quotes we were talking about Abercrombie and Fitch saying high expectations going to be tough to deliver going forward with those high expectations and to carry that momentum and to beat that momentum, okay? What to remember, folks, is that what everyone got right and what everybody got wrong and how quickly things can change. That's the one thing just to keep in mind as we come out of this because optimism is very high right now. Um, the AI craze, the next article we're going to talk about from the journal, this one from the journal as well, we'll take a look at. What did Wall Street get right about the markets this year? Not much. Remember that headline as we go into 2024, what's supposed to happen? The Fed's supposed to begin cutting. Inflation is under control. They're going to begin cutting in March. They're going to cut by a point, a point and a half this year, another point, point and a half next year. The economy is flourishing. AI is going to deliver earnings that like we have never seen. Now, that's what the market thinks right now, and it may be right. But remember how wrong it can be, okay? And I'm not saying it can be wrong. It will be wrong. I'm not. Because I think this market has some legs, at least over the next three or six months. We've talked about some of the A to B, C to D formations, right, that you have going on on some of those big FANG stocks. NASDAQ 100, we still have room to go. Maybe those FANG stocks are the ones that carry us a little bit higher. We get into the March and the June realm of things. We'll see where the consumer is because things are tight right now, man. And that is the worry that I see going forward, okay? I don't see inflation raging back up. Crude is at a very friendly price right now. It's $71. That's one of the things that could surge higher. That's not going to worry the Fed as much, though, because they don't worry about energy and, and food as much, right? They worry about the core component because energy they don't have as much control over. That could press the consumer, though. So remember that as we sit at about $70, that there are geopolitical risks that could drive crude higher. Crude higher. And that could cause some worries for the consumer. There could be some lag there with consumers feeling the punch of higher prices that are not going down. They're just going to be going up by 2 to 3% going forward. 
after going up, what, 25% over the last three years, maybe even more, depending on what you're talking about. So remember that as we go forward, okay? The market's been wrong many times, and I'm not screaming hell is coming, but just remember that and how quickly. I mean, look at the yields where they were when Silicon Valley banks failed in March of this year. We were at 3.7 on the 10-year, folks. We went all the way to 5 after a slight reprieve. Okay, things change very quickly, to say the least. It has been quite a year. The Nasdaq comp is up 44 percent. The S&P is up almost 25 percent. The Dow is up 15 percent. But remember, you had much steeper cuts, right? The Dow's at all time highs, man. Okay. So even though it's a smaller number, the Dow is at all time highs above that number. That high in 2022 when we kicked it off. We're 1,200 points almost above that price level versus S&Ps, what? We're only 20 points above that price level. NASDAQ comp, what are we? About 300 points above that price level. So even though we've had a softer year in the Dow percentage-wise, you didn't have the pullback. Okay, you had the pullback in the NASDAQ 100 when you went from almost 17,000 down to a low of 10,484. And just like that, we're back above 17,000. But you got A to B, C to D's, man. The NASDAQ 100, we talked about this one. You're going from about 11,000 to 16,000. You're pulling back to about 14. That brings you to about 19,000, folks, which is about what? 11% to a 12% acceleration that you might get higher in the NASDAQ 100. That would take place over a period of about the next five, six months. And yeah, maybe then. What happens in June, okay? Don't expect that dramatic pullback as we come in the beginning of the year. Things are good. Inflation numbers have been great. The Fed is probably cutting. It's ha it's time for them to cut, man. You know, in the numbers, we're not at five or six percent inflation anymore. Okay, we're probably at three percent, two and a half to three and a half. To be fair, maybe we're near the two and a half side. It's tough to tell because things get volatile on a monthly basis. You go year over year, and you're taking in very stale data going back 10, 11, 12 months. Okay, shorter term, it's very tough on a 30-day basis. You got volatility in those numbers, so. We're at a number far below 5.5%, though. So the Fed is at one of the more restrictive rate policies that they've been at for some time. And I imagine that March cut is coming. So very hard to imagine a lot of weakness coming into that part of things. But the market has got ahead of itself in the same way. Remember, the market has got ahead of itself as it rightfully does. Okay, That's not wrong that it gets ahead of itself. It prices in future action. I'm going for the daily here. But remember that everything that's priced in for the market thinking, when you look at articles like what did Wall Street get wrong, well, they better get this right or you're going to see some volatility in yields. And they've been wrong before. And so it's very easy to think we're out of the woods here. Um, but just like that, we had banks failing and the consumer could show a little weakness, man. That credit card balance is rising, right? Savings not where they were. And people just gradually adjusting to the fact that we are dealing with these higher prices going forward. And eventually they're going to be in the new norm, which is potentially going to put a little bit of a stress on the American consumer, even though you can't hold that consumer down. Uh, OK, we talked a little bit of oil, right? How that could throw a little bit of a wrench in thing. Remember, man, gas prices are very affordable right now. I think there's a lot of room for that to go up versus down. Uh, and the U.S. is trying to persuade shippers to sail the Red Sea despite all the attacks going on. Um, yeah, of course they're engaged. This is an interesting one. Can you imagine being on the other side of that? Shippers wait to see if safe passage is provided is how they're saying it. But the military is trying to reassure shipping companies that a multinational force is making it safe to sail through the Red Sea and the Suez Canal, even though attacks show no sign of stopping. Well, I imagine if they can actually stop them, people will start sailing through that area again but boy private private companies with citizens just trying to make a living yeah if it turns out they can maintain staff passage they'll come back but right now they really can't be sure i would agree i mean put yourself on the other side of that right um when you're an executive responsible for employees lives and i don't know yeah and we talked about this i think it was yesterday that at least half of the container ships that regularly transit the Red Sea and the Suez Canal are avoiding that route now because of the threat. Yeah. That seems like a no-brainer to a certain degree. All right. What else we got? 
Yeah, I mean, just just thinking big picture, right? This was one of the major themes in 2023. Talking about from the journal, what's coming in 2024 that's going to change your life? Generative AI. Not a surprise there. It's going to remain huge. If you haven't checked out ChatGPT, folks, um, check it out. Become familiar with these things because they are going to take over society to a certain degree. Just like we had calculators, just like we had the computer and we had emails, right? If you don't understand it and you can't utilize it, you'll be at a disadvantage because it is going to increase productivity to the nth degree. And the more you understand it, the more it can help you in that regard. Um, yeah, they talk about EVs in here. We talked about G Xiaomi. Thanks, Dan, for that one, right? Yeah, Xiaomi. That company introducing their EV from China yesterday. And boy, that one looked like something good, man. But you got a bunch coming down the line. Elon, he's been cutting prices pretty dramatic fashion this year. The stock's held up pretty well, um, all things considered. And with that in mind, we'll jump to this one as we tease it coming into the open. It's been a good year for the richest of the rich. As they say, the rich get richer, right? $1.5 trillion. They're just doing fine, folks. Don't you worry. Uh, stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the last opening bell of 2023. Don't go TFNN away. has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF FNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&P off by three right now. All the markets slightly in the red. We jump over to Tesla shares. Quite a year for Tesla. You kick off the year at about $120. We finished the year at 254 You made it as high as 300 You see the channel line I've got up here. Kind of breaks below that channel line. This is a little bit bearish, man. You know, you, depending on where you put that channel line on the bottom side of that, that could easily be building cause to trade lower. As in, you break out of that channel line. Oh, man, Bud Rolfs, love you, Bud, miss you. Trades up to that line. That could just be a, a consistent testing of that line before trading lower. So be careful of that Tesla one, man. Um, you see, that's right off of the lows of 100. You touch that area on May 8th. That also correlating, you know, some nice parallel action here in terms of the channel line you had. They line up pretty well from the highs of early 2023 and the same highs of July of this year. And as you can see, pretty parallel lines, a pretty well-defined channel line taking the highs and the lows of this year. And what do you do? You break through that with force on their last earnings. You come up to that level. And, yeah, we, we will see. But guess what? Not just yet. Elon Musk. I mean, it's amazing how far ahead he is of some of these people, man. Um, I mean, he's $100 billion over Balmer, which puts you where Balmer was in April of this year. Right. So this chart is talking about uh, the world's richest Elon Musk. He's back above that. And look where they kicked it off. It was Bernard Arnault. Right. He was there, but they have not had the year that the tech companies have had. And you got Musk starting the year off at about 130 or 140. He's up to 232 billion. You got Bezos right on the heels of Arnault. Now he started the year off at what? Probably 110, 120. Amazon's having quite the year. They kicked it off at about 80 bucks. He's chased them down neck and neck for second place. Rounding out the top five, the Microsoft duo, Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer sitting at 140 and 130 respectively. Um, quite a year for the richest of the rich, man, as they keep going. Yeah. For what it's worth. All right. You can't hold this NASDAQ down, man. Last day of 2023. Look at this. We got a little bit of a pop on the open. NASDAQ makes it into positive territory. Let's see how the FANG stocks are kicking things off. Apple shares were positive by 60 cents right now. Microsoft shares positive by 88 cents right now. You jump over to Google. A little bit of a dip lower coming into the opening bell. Google off about 16 pennies. We check out NVIDIA. Oh, there you go. NVIDIA is going for it, man. They got five bucks. They get... They got six and a half hours to do it, and they got five bucks for all-time highs. Almost six bucks right now in the video. We talked about Abercrombie and Fitch. Quite a year for them. Do we see any selling in the last day? To I don't think so. Not quite yet. Not on the winners, man. Maybe they're waiting for January. What's it? January 2nd is the first trading day, I believe, of this year. Yeah, January 2nd, the first day. They might be waiting for, for those sales to make sure they're getting hit with that tax bill in 2024. We will see. Some of the other equities that had some big years, man. Uber. They trade lower pre-market. Maybe if something was going on there, I'm not sure. But we get a little bit of a pop. Uber off about 38 pennies. Quite a year for them, right? From 25 to 62. And you are pushing basically all-time highs that you were at. Yeah, back in the beginning of 2021. Whew. Just remarkable, some of these equities. Salesforce, another one that had quite a year. Still well off the highs of 311, but you start the year off at 140. You're pushing 265 right now. We jump around to some of the other equities. Nike, not so much. Nike, the high at 179. You kick off the year at 120, trading at 109. <sighs> Foot Locker having some problems, man. Kicks off the year at 40. You make it down to 18. Be careful of Foot Locker, man. Okay? Be careful of Foot Locker. Another one to be careful of, Coles. Be careful of Coles. These equities are catching a little bit of a pop, man. But, boy, there is strength everywhere. The consumer has been remarkably resilient, okay? Even when you go into some of the areas of retail, what were we just talking about with Abercrombie & Fitch? I think the retail, one of the retail indexes they were talking about, up about 21% this year, right? These equities are struggling in an environment where they should have been doing okay, to put it lightly. When you see stuff like Kohl's, um, Foot Locker, Nike, they're experiencing their own deals. You jump over to Target shares. They've had, they, now, what I will say about Target, longer term, okay, longer term, the brand appeal for Target is going to pay off in the longer term. 
Okay, that's where Kohl's lacks. I know I'm paying a premium price when I go into Target, man. You better know it just by looking at the price tags if you have any awareness of what's going on with Target, Publix, whatever supermarket you're shopping at. Then you compare it to Walmart. It is a different world, folks, the amount they charge. But the user experience is up to par. I'm aware of it, right? I buy certain things in there that maybe I'm aware of that I'm price shopping. But if you're going into Target and you're buying every single thing in there and you're buying like groceries in their section, boy, you are overpaying. But it's a user experience and people love Target, okay? Kohl's does not have that. And Kohl's is expensive. And that's the thing. You got to have one with the other. You can't be a little expensive and not have the customer loyalty. And that's what Target does have. So they got some ways to go to get back to where they were at 268. Um, but longer term, they're going to be okay. Walmart shares, they had quite a year, man. Walmart's always going to be okay, especially in this environment where consumers are saving. 157.71, they were up to all-time highs recently of 169.94 for Walmart shares. We jump around to some of the banks. I was talking about J.P. Morgan, man. Pushing all-time highs at 170.24. You kicked off the year between 130 and 140. Not the case with the other banks, though. You look at Citi. All right. Yeah, you kicked off the year at 45, but boy, you were just down to 38. You're finishing slightly positive for the year. Bank of America, what are they, flat for the year? At 34, you kick off the year at about 34. Wells Fargo, they're going to finish positive by about, eh, not bad percentage-wise. You kicked off the year at 40, you're pushing 49, but you see the difference in these charts, right? J.P. Morgan, remarkable strength off the lows they had a year ago in October of 100. You're pushing 170 for that company. Yeah, you talk about it, man. Uh, Affirm, another one that had quite a year, but still well off the highs. Yeah, this thing's got moment momentum, man. And they are going to be a player for years to come. I mean, imagine being the company that gets to finance people who are purchasing items in Walmart that can't afford that purchase the day they're making it. Unfortunately, many people, okay, the socioeconomic um, roles of, of the shoppers in Walmart, unfortunately, are people that – will be ripe to maybe finance those purchases because they don't have the ability to pay for it all today. Uh, quite a business relationship to get into that. What I do wonder is, I mean, Walmart's such a company, man. Why might, you know, and maybe if somebody's got this in the den, help me out, okay? Because I understand smaller companies, you know, you don't want to get into that game, okay? What I found it interesting is that Walmart couldn't do this themselves. And I understand that's not their business. That's how businesses conduct their business, right? That they're subleasing that out to a contractor. That is their business that they run perfectly. But they're obviously giving up some of the profits and they could probably facilitate that risk themselves when you look at the fact, as we pull up Walmart shares, that you're talking about a company that's what? $424 billion market cap, okay? A firm for context, is a $15 billion market cap company, but a firm just doubled their market cap in the last, like, eight weeks or so. We'll talk more about this when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. I got my Thinkorswim platform just reverting a little bit over break there. For some reason, I had to restart it. Just getting into everything. All right, we got it back up there. And yeah, great point from our man Dan in the tent. Dan in the den, uh, talking about you know testing that out for Walmart potentially with a firm. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, obviously always nice to to do something on someone else to make sure it works before you plow that type of money in it. The last point I was making there is that. A firm is a fifteen billion dollar company right now, but when that was coming out, right, their last earnings, you were at seventeen. Okay? So you literally just went up two hundred percent since November. So they were only about a five billion dollar company is where they were. Ten billion dollars in market cap has been added since their last earnings on November third. They inked that deal. I think that deal came out November twenty fourth. So that's something they were probably thinking of already. But yeah, I'm surprised that <clears throat> Walmart just doesn't give people the option without going into it. I feel like it's almost a no-brainer. Um, yeah, the default results, right? Managing credit risk. That's where it comes from, okay? That's what they're handing off to a firm. Um, nonetheless, for what it's worth, a firm, they're in a good spot, man. And yeah, they may have some volatility. I wonder what the details of that Walmart deal are going forward. But even if it's not Walmart, you're going to see them showing up in a lot more places, and we already do. Not sure that's the best thing for society if we all end up financing everything, even the most shorter-term items, right? The meme out there was a Domino's pizza that you could put onto an Affirm um, plan. Not sure that that was the case going on here. I think that was even overseas. But nonetheless, um, try not to finance Domino's pizza if you can avoid that. All right, we jump to what else we got going on. Yeah, Tiger Global. So Coleman, he's back in charge of the venture unit after they've had some problems. Now, what's remarkable here is you have Scott Schleifer. I think it is Schleifer. So he steps down as the head of Tiger Global Management's private investments. Okay, and this is what happens when you get a little bit of a turmoil, man. But boy, they stepped in at the wrong time. So Chase is jumping back in. And what was so interesting, right? So they got all this capital, just like the banks did. They deployed almost $20 billion that they raised near the height of the venture capital boom, leading to a 33% write down 
last year, an additional 6% this year. That obviously had some of those investors questioning what was going on. Now, Schleifer, if I'm saying his name right, is only 46, okay? He's going to remain a partner. Part of the reason they're talking about it, and who knows the truth, but the truth is always somewhere in between, as most say. Florida life, man. Yeah. Now, Tiger's got a requirement that employees work from its New York headquarters, okay? Coleman said the decision of Schleifer's to step to a different role, his fellow billionaire, um, wanted to remain with his family in Florida. They don't tax personal income. Yeah, what's wrong with that, right? Now, the move diminishes the role of an executive who helped build a franchise that scored big wins with stakes in ByteDance and JD.com and still boasts, this is the part I wanted to get to, a net internal rate of return of 20% over 20 years. We'll call that the 2020, man. Whew, the 2020 club. Um, but he's stepping down. You have a couple tough years, man. The investors revolt. Imagine that, right? That's the thing. What have you done for me lately is the phrase, right? What have you done for me lately? 20% over 20 years, and it looks like he's probably getting pushed out so that Chase could come back and uh, right the ship that they, um, yeah, steered a little bit off right there at a 33% write down, and it might be worse than that, right? Because these are a lot of small private companies. The valuation of those companies, debatable is probably a good word in terms of where that goes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they talked about J.P. Morgan Wealth and Asset Management Division. They had about $2 billion invested with them. Um, they are among those who were frustrated. Yeah. Now, after the recent markdowns, they're sitting on a, almost a 20% paper loss, nonetheless. All right. What else do we have going on for 2023, man? How about the year in sports and the year in name, image, and likeness? Yeah. This uh, college athletics football basketball everything getting shaped and it's not going to stop man the portal right the portal has become uh quite the portal teenage millionaires rocking the sports world here's the deal folks they should be teenage millionaires okay they should that's the thing i was like ah, this is a business people are making money off of these people meaning the players in that sport and it is absolutely not right that they have been getting abused in terms of and you say, oh, they get a free education. Listen, that's great. But if the school's making $100 million because they get the biggest, they get the next LeBron James that goes to their school and they make $100 million off of it, is it really fair that that player, their name, image, and likeness coming to that school is just getting a $30,000 scholarship, $50,000 scholarship? Okay. These players, a lot of them are young men. Okay. There's young women out there making millions as well as they should be. Okay. But a lot of them are young men. They're not boys. They're teenagers who are 18 years old who can sign up and go fight a war overseas. And meanwhile, they're told at 18 years old, possessing a skill that private universities, some of them, right, public universities as well, uh, use that skill that player has to profit. And then they tell the player, but they can't share those profits because that would be wrong. Okay? That has changed so um and yeah they are making millions as they should man okay as they should um and the ncaa billion dollars in, in revenue and that's in 2019 those numbers um but this is a good thing folks i've always wondered how that could take place you know how because think about it in football it's even worse in football okay you talk about a right to work i don't know how this hasn't been politicized more with with the rage of right to work states, etc. If you're an 18 year old man, let's say you have a child. I now have a child. Things get a little bit more real when somebody else is dependent on you, your income, your livelihood. Okay. You're an 18 year old male. You have kids. Happens all the time. All right. And the NFL tells you that they do not employ 18 year olds, period. Stop. End of story. Okay. Now there's nuances that go on in here okay but i mean what's the rule in the nfl i think you got to spend two years in college i'll pull up the rule at the next break but i'm always amazed at how they lock so what do they do they lock you out of the pro league for age discrimination and the only place that you can 
play that's competitive is a place that refuses to pay anybody, which is the college game. Never understood how that could take place when you're talking about men who are 18 years old, 19, women who are 18, 19, okay? Don't understand how the biggest leagues out there, all right, if they can play, they can play. In the NBA, it's a better example um, because it happens all the time. You have the select few, like the LeBrons, that can come out. And the argument against that, folks, right, is that you have all these young kids making bad decisions. They come out too early. Totally true. 100%. You can't protect people from making bad decisions in their own life, though. That's the deal by penalizing the freedoms of others sometimes, okay, depending on those outcomes, how bad they are, etc. But you can't take away the right for somebody to work at 18 as an NFL or NBA player just because there are other participants that make a bad decision to give up that eligibility at times. But that might change as well as it should. But name, image, and likeness. Sports betting, another one that's a big 2023. One more segment. We'll be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. we got the S&Ps flat right now. NASDAQ 100, they've been the leader all year. They're the leader today, barely. They're positive by 12 points. Dow, still above 38,000. We'll see if they can hold on to that 38,000 mark to end in the futures. 2023, we're negative by 20 points in the Dow right now. You jump over the VIX, right? Great discussion last night between my dad and Tim Ord. They talk about so many great ratios on that program, folks. My dad talks to Tim Ord every Tuesday and Thursday. You can look up those 
special segments just by going to our YouTube page. And don't forget, folks, if you're, you know, you got some time this weekend, okay, head on over to the TFNN.com homepage. All you're going to do is you select the services tab on the front page right at the top from the menu. We got a number of great webinars up there, okay? Tim Ward, we got the secret science of market tops. You got the six secret ratios every trader should know about. Teddy Kegstad, he's been doing outstanding on this market recently. Calendar stock option spreads, Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option spreads. You want to attend one of the live trading webinars, Basil's done, Larry's done. You want to attend my dad's timing of the trade methodology webinar. I was talking about this. Now, my dad did this in 2022, folks, but this is not something that you needed to view the day of. This is not even a live trading. This is just his presentation on his trading methodology. You get his book with a signed copy. You get his newsletter, which is $169 value. And you get this course, which is four and a half hours, folks. Okay, quality volume, ABCs, Fibonacci, cause and effects, swing points. Check that out. You get that four and a half hour archive. Check out those archives, folks, as we come into the holiday weekend. And like I kicked off the program, if you... If one thing stays with you this this program, be safe out there this weekend, okay? Even if you're not drinking and driving, no speeding, okay? Whether you're rushing to a holiday party, the roads are dangerous, folks, okay? And unfortunately, um, they're more dangerous than many, many of us really realize in terms of the number of deaths out there. This weekend's a tough one with the holiday weekend, especially the way it falls with a three-day weekend coming on Monday. Be safe out there, folks. We look forward to seeing you back here Monday morning, January 2nd.